Welcome to today's tutorial and as the title says we're going to be looking at the map function. Now the map function if we go to our Arduino reference is a mathematical function and if we click on it we get the details about it and what the map function basically allows us to do is take a range of number uh, two ranges of numbers and work out in the second range the position of a value in the first range now it sounds a bit weird so let's look at an example to make life easy now for this example I'm just going to be using an Arduino Uno you could use any board you want uh, because we're only going to be using the serial output in fact I'll clear mine off because I've already been playing with this just to make sure I got it right okay let's look at the function again so it takes a from low and a from high this is a range of numbers and in my example I'm going to start off with a range of numbers from 0 to 100 and then I've got an output range um, a too low and a too high and my output range is going to be 0 to 10,000 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an input value of 20 which is the value that is going in here and we all know that between 0 and 100 the 20th value is obviously 20 in fact it's 21 because I'm starting at 0 and then I assume we would know what the 20th value is in this uh, range of numbers and I've done the same in the same range again but I'm using the value of 5. Now just to explain the code uh, because it's going to serial print I'm going to show you the input value I'm going to show you the equation that it's going to and then we're going to get the result so let's just run this and uh, see what we get he says looking for the reset button there we go so if we just bring this up we've got an input value of 20 and then we have our equation and obviously the equivalent of 20 between a value of 0 and 100 is 2000 in the equivalent range between 0 and 10,000 again scrolling down to our next example the value of 5 gives us a value of 500 now one thing you just need to be aware of because actually it's slightly off it is a slight fraction off when the map function runs it removes uh, fractions decimals so if you're trying to do something where you want decimal places what you're probably best doing is multiplying your ranges by a hundred and then sort of bringing them down dividing them again by a hundred afterwards now obviously the examples I've just shown they're a bit pathetic because let's be honest I would just normally multiply by a hundred to get this value however where the map function comes into its own is when the values start to get a little bit more complex so let's look at a more complex value so for this next example I'm going to put an input value of 5 again I'm going to use the range of 0 to 100 but this time the output range is 280 to 229821 I have no idea what the answer to this is um, and then what I've done is a second version where I'm going to have an input value of 286 but this time the input range is as weird as the output range so this time the input range is 225 to 336 and the output I'm going to leave at the 280 to 229821 now I've already um, compiled and uploaded this to save some time and these are the results so the equivalent of 5 between 0 and 100 comes out at 11757 between these two crazy values and 286 as a value between 225 and 336 
comes out at 126424. So as we can see, we are now mapping, if you like, the position between two values in a second set of values. Now, these next two examples are a little bit weird. They actually came about because I made a mistake when I was writing the code. Now, what we're looking at here, we've got our input value of 10, but the range of numbers that I'm using is 100 to 200. Now, 10 does not fall within that value. So when we run this, we are looking to map a value that is outside of the range that we have here. Now, I've already run this, so let's just bring up the answer. As you can see, that value suddenly gave me a value of minus 206306. Just be aware. Again, making life a little bit simpler, I did a second one with an input value of 10. This time I've made the figures a little bit easier for us to understand. But again, the output range is 1000 to 2000. And we see that the with an input value of 10, which obviously is way outside that range, we get 100, which makes sense when we're looking at numbers that we can understand. But what it just shows you is that when you are mapping these values, um, if you overrun or underrun a value, it's still going to give you an answer. Now, I'm not sure if that value is going to be valid all the way down. I'm pretty sure it will be uh, because if you look on the um, the Arduino reference, it actually gives you the mathematical formula that it works these things out with. And I can't see any reason in there why it won't work on an out of range example. However, it is not good to write stuff that runs out of range. Now, great as it is that we've sort of seen how the map function works, what on earth would you use it for? Well, this is a pretty simple example of the sort of thing that mapping really helps with. So I want you to imagine this box is a touch screen, uh, one of these LCD touch screens. And if anyone has ever used one, I, the one I've got on my desk at the moment is a 480 by 320. So let's just imagine this is pixel zero and this is pixel 479. So that makes a total of 480. Now, unfortunately, the touch screen and the LCD screen are not linked together. And very often, especially if you rotate the screen, you can get the weirdest situation. So a typical situation for me is I've got 0 to 479 for the pixels, but the touch at this end starts at 20 and at the other end finishes at 1236. So those numbers don't match those numbers. But what I really want to know is when I touch the screen between 20 and 1236, what is the value in pixels going across the screen? And so our next example is actually using those values. So we've got our 1236 to 20. Now notice the input range here is the largest number first and the smallest number second. You can do that both on the from and the uh, output. Um, it doesn't matter. You can also have negative numbers in here. Just make sure that your output value can handle those things. So in this example, we're going to touch uh, pixel 60 and then we're going to touch pixel 1230. Now, if we look on our screen, if we were to touch 60, it's going to be somewhere around here, sort of in the high 400s. Whereas if we use 1230, it's going to be very near the end of this screen. And as I've already run this before I've started, we can see that when we touch the input value of 60, 
we get a value of 463 which is going to be around here somewhere and then once again using that input value of 1230 we get the pixel position of 2 and so this is the sort of thing that this mapping is very useful for it's also uh, used uh, if you're using things like the Adafruit servo library you have to put the um, frequency in for the position that you want the servo to go in and that is an absolute headache if you use a map function you can actually just put the user sort of an input of uh, 0 to 180 you can then have your output as the range between the two limits in whatever it is that sets the PWM frequency and you will get an output value that tells you this is the weird number to put in to get my servo to move to the position I want. So that is a very simple overview. What I've now got is another example if you're interested which is to do with NeoPixels. Now the reason I picked NeoPixels is because they have a red, a green and a blue value and in this example what I'm going to be doing is fading from one color to the next which means I'm going to be using three maps simultaneously so let's have a quick look at what I'm trying to achieve So sorry about the poor video quality. If anyone can tell me a really good way to video LEDs, please let me know because I find that the uh, camera just gets the colors washed out. Anyway, what it basically does is I've got five uh, NeoPixels and it is fading in and out different colors on the first one and then passing the values along so it's sort of gives a sort of a streaming effect. That was the goal of the code. So for those who've never used uh, NeoPixels, um, I'm using the uh, Adafruit NeoPixel library. I've got it on pin eight. I've got five NeoPixels on my strip of NeoPixels. You always need to set how many NeoPixels you've got. And then that information uh, forms the sort of the object and I've called mine pixels. Now going down to the setup, we start the um, near pixel system up. And the first thing I do is go near pixels clear. This sets all the near pixels to off, but bizarrely doesn't turn them off until pixel show is triggered. Uh, what happens with the near pixels is if you like you send the signal to the near pixel of what you want it to do next and then when you set send the show it displays the latest settings so when we come down to setting the colors of the near pixel um, we set the color um, the zero here is the number of the near pixel on the strip so zero is the closest to the Arduino, so to speak. And then we set the colors and we've got a red value, a green value and a blue value. And these values can vary between zero and 255. And this is where you see above the mapping functions. So what I've got to do is I've got the various outputs, which obviously go in here. I've got an input value and on this particular sketch I'm fading them in and out faster. I'm going to do it in 10 steps. So I'm going to go from one color to the next color in 10 steps. And what this means I'm doing here is uh, I've set up 0 to 50 um, but I'm actually going to do it in movements of 10. Uh, the reason I did it 0 to 50 was I've also done a version where I do it um, a time a length of 50 it just it fades slower looks smoother but um, we've then got my 
red uh, if you remember in the function we've got a too low and a too high I've got my from and my from so the from is going from 0 to 50 the uh, the too low and the too high if you notice I've put a letter in front of each so I've got a red too low to a red too high so those are my three um, mapping events those are getting the value for here and all I'm doing um, I don't use delay I don't like blocking code so this has been written using millis to do the timing loop and what it's doing here is it's working through the different steps and stepping through this one bit at a time now there's a function down here that once the value gets to uh, 50 what it then does is it takes the final outputs and it puts them in so the old too high output becomes the new too low output and then I pick some random values of the new color that the pixels need to go to so that means that what we're doing here is we've got a dynamic um, too low to the too high and this is one of the great things about the map function that I can keep changing uh, this value so I just want to keep going through my steps of 0 to 50 and it's just working its way from the one value to the next and if you like there is a red a green and a blue and it's just working between them all in those steps now bizarrely the way this could work is there may only be a difference of three here but there could be a difference of 255 and it's just going to work out so the average amount per step and just change that in a nice smooth routine and that actually worked out really well now once I'd got a really nice fade system set up for a single near pixel then I created a second version this is how I tend to write my software I instead of trying to do the finished item in one go I will do it incrementally I will le learn to work with the one item then increase the numbers so in the first one you've got these um, R output value G output value if you look now these are now in an array and uh, so what it now does is as it's uh, doing its value it then actually moves the last value in uh, a near pixel into the next near pixel so it's like streaming streaming the last value along so that each near pixel imitates the previous stage of the near pixel before it to give it that nice sort of uh, flow down the line almost like it looks looks like waves of color moving down the line unfortunately that as you saw the video that I took of it is absolutely lousy now these sketches are on the digital town website so that you can have a look at them the important bit to see in these is how the map functions is working that's what we're really looking at and the idea of these sketches was just to show how they can be used in a real world example so the map function places that it's very useful things like as I said the Adafruit servo library as you can see when you want to move from one color a set of pixels to another again a very useful place to use mapping you can use it in uh, touch screens as I've mentioned and other things that you could use it in if you think if you had a temperature sensor obviously we know that the temperature um, is related to a voltage usually that we're sort of reading on the sort of analog pins you could then map that to the values of the temperature that you'll get off the data sheet and you could use the map then so that if you've got a particular value in that would give you the particular temperature out so plenty of uses for the map sort of function and uh, I hope that you know that has been useful to, to you if it has please click the like and subscribe and i'll try and get some more videos out in the new f near future 
So hopefully, you know, you'll be able to use that map function. I certainly find it very useful. Bye for now.